Hello, everyone. Navarian Rin was born, and his father was named King Lien. Oh, uh, listen how cute I sound back then. This video is from April 2012, and one of the first lore videos that I've ever done. Since that time, Varian has done a lot more in the storyline, and with the start of a brand new year, let's honor the man that gave everything to save his world. There's quite a bit to go through, so we'll probably need a couple of parts to cover it all, but let's just begin and see how far we can go, shall we? For the Alliance. Varian Rin was born into the royal family, prince to the kingdom of Stormwind. His father, Lane Rin, ruled the kingdom, and at his side were his childhood friends Enduin Lothar as a warrior, a knight's champion to the king, and the guardian Medivh. The Guardian was magically empowered to defend the kingdom, and things were relatively peaceful for a time. That is, until the spirit of Sargeras, hidden within Medivh, made contact with the Orcish warlock called Dan. Sargeras wanted to weaken the world and get it ready for Legion invasion, and the Orcish horde were perfect for this task. They worked together on opening the Dark Portal, war was spread into Azeroth, and Stormwind rallied to defend its kingdom. The good side of Medivh was still doing his best to fight back against Sargeras, and he was placing people around him who could be his downfall. People like his apprentice Ketgar, but also the Half orc, half Draenei, Garona half orcan. Garona was bred and trained in Order of Gul'dan to become the perfect assassin, had spells placed in her mind to keep her obedient, and she was sent by Gul'dan to keep an eye on Medivh. She eventually revealed herself to Khadgar, seeing humans as a potential means of escaping Gul'dan, and they eventually discovered Medivh's corruption. Quickly fleeing the Tower of Karazhan, they made the way to Stormwind to inform them all about what was going on. Enduin Lothar believed them, and together with some more soldiers, they made the way back into the tower to confront the Guardian. There, a a vision was shown to Garona and Ketgar. A vision in which her future self, she murdered King Lane, and both of them knew it to be true. Regardless, the vision ended and the battle with Medivh was on. He literally drained the youth out of Ketgar, making him look like a very old man, but together they were able to stab him, and as Sargeras tried to manifest, they chopped off his heads and they put an end to this threat. The first Sargeras might have been dealt with, but the Horde's invasion was still on its way. Despite the vision that they had seen in the tower, Garona was still allowed into Stormwind's court, and she became a trusted confidant to the king. They now had to defend the realm without the powers of the guardian at their side, so Lothar, champion of Stormwind, he rallied their people in an attempt to stop the massive numbers of the Horde. Perhaps they believed that the vision they were shown was not guaranteed, and this would be a great mistake. Gul'dan's spells placed in Corona's mind, the very weapons in her hands, they manipulated her and they forced her to do the unthinkable. Bad news, sire. The clans are united under Black Hand in this assault. They will Tremble, stand together until Stormwind the has fallen. Gul'dan is bringing up his warlocks by nightfall. Until then, the Blackrock clan will be trying to take the Eastern Wall. A thousand deaths. We will hold until the reinforcements come. As long as men with stout hearts are manning the walls and the throne, Stormwind will hold. The Orc leaders agree with your assessment. Varian walked into the room and he found Garona clutching the bloody knife. Tears were streaming down her cheeks. Stormwind was eventually destroyed by the orcs and Enuil Lofer took all those that he could, including Prince Varian and Khadgar, and they set sail to the land of Lordaeron. The world had to be warned about the threat of the Horde. None could stand alone in this war. They had to unite and fight back. Now as you might imagine, the tale of a force so strong that none of the kingdoms could stand against it, it was quite a tale to tell, and not everyone was immediately convinced. Some of them, like Gant Greymane, ruler of Gilneas, he believed that his kingdom was strong enough to crush any who would attempt to make landfall on their southern coast, and then people like King Perinald, ruler of Altarak, he wondered if they could not simply negotiate with them. But Lothar's words were eventually able to convince them that the Horde wanted their world and would settle for nothing less, and that their might required them to stand together. So it was that the the alliance of Lordaeron was formed, and the war for the world was on. Varen himself was not directly involved in the war effort. At such a young age, he had seen everything that he had known, his family, his kingdom, burned to ashes by the orcs. King Terranus, the ruler of Lordaeron, he was kind and wise. King Lane had been a very good man, and they counted him as a friend and ally, and they would do everything in their power to restore Varian to his throne. More than that, Terranus also realized that Varian needed to keep hearing his title of prince, needed to know that he was still respected, that he was still part of the royal family when he had lost absolutely everything but his life. 
The boy was left in the care of Terranus' son Arthas, who didn't really know what to say to Varian, so he told him about this fowl that he had seen being born yesterday. It sounded insane, but it was the first thing that sprang to his mind, and he spoke earnestly. Varian turned toward him and gazed at him for a long moment. Emotions flitted across his face. Offense, disbelief, gratitude, yearning, understanding. Suddenly, the brown eyes filled with tears, and Varian looked away. He folded his arms and hunched in on himself. His shoulders shaken with sobs, he did his best the muffle. They came out anyway. Harsh, raking sounds of mourning for a father, a kingdom, a way of life that he probably hadn't been able to grieve until this precise minute. Arthur squeezed his arm and felt it rigid as stone beneath his fingers. I hate winter. Varian sobbed, and the depth of the hurt conveyed by those three simple words, a seeming non sequitur, humbled Arthas. Unable to watch such raw pain, yet powerless to do anything about it, he dropped his hand, turned away, and stared out the window. Outside, the snow continued to fall. These two boys grew very close during their time together. Although their first meeting had been laced with grief and awkwardness, Arthas had discovered that Varian had actually a strong spirit and a generally optimistic outlook. They also discovered that Varian was far superior when it came to fighting. Terranus had always been trying to protect his son, which is why his training hadn't really begun yet. Varian's father had also tried to protect him, but he had failed. The realities of life have a way of intruding like that, but Varian promised his new friends that when the war was over and proper trainers could be spared again, that they would talk to the king together. And the war would eventually be over. The alliance of Lordaeron, they were able to defeat the Horde, but the price of the victory was great. Many lives were lost, including that of Enduin Lothar, but they had reclaimed the world and rebuilding had to be done. The orcs that surrendered, they were placed within internment camps, while the reconstruction of Stormwind and even the building of Nedergard Keep, aiming to keep an eye on the Dark Portal, they were placed upon the shoulders of the Stonemasons Guild. The leader of this guild was Edwin van Cleef, and the camps and all this rebuilding, it naturally cost a lot of gold, which once again led to a bit of discussion amongst the rulers. Greymane particularly wondered why they had to spend so much gold on a wall, a tower and a single keep, just to keep an eye on the Dark Portal, but Varian asked them how great of a price they put on their safety. Nothing worth having ever comes cheaply, and Terranus, he was very proud of the recently crowned young king of Stormwind, who had grown up to be a clever, charming, noble young man, and a natural leader and a gifted diplomat for one so young, despite all they had lost at such a young age. Their gold was put to good use, since Stormwind had not only been rebuilt, it was even stronger and better than before. They've added the Dwarven District, they've added the Deep Run Tram constructed by the Gnomes to make passage to Idleforge easier, and this kept the alliance between the humans and Dwarves strong. Building Nedegard Keep was also a very good idea, since the Dark Portal would reopen and the Horde came back to Azeroth. This time, not an attempt to conquer the planets, this time they came to collect powerful artifacts, which allowed them to open up more portals and invade different worlds. The Alliance of Lordaeron, the Sons of Lothar, they figured out what was going on and they realized that they could not let the Horde go through with this. They could not allow them to spread the same pain and suffering as they had brought to Azeroth, so people like Trevelyan, Illyria Windrunner, Ketgar, Curdon Wildhammer and Dan of Trollbane, they took their troops and they ventured forth through the Dark Portal to take the battle to the Orcs' own world. They were successful in stopping them from invading different worlds, but they were also forced to close the Dark Portal from Draenor's side. The people back in Azeroth, they had no idea what actually happened to them, if they were still alive or all gone. So to honor these brave sons of Lothar, statues were built in front of Stormwind, so that all who would enter the city, that they could gaze upon those who had given their all to save the world. With the Dark Portal closed once again, a rare, relative time of peace entered Varian's life. He fell in love with Tiffin Illyrian and had a child that they named Anduin, in honor of the man who had done so very much for the kingdom. Arthas Menethil also made his way to the city in one of the biggest celebrations Stormwind had ever seen. It was time for him to officially become a paladin, part of the Knights of the Silver Hands, and Varian, he had opened up the palace to all visiting royalty and their attendants. The boyhood friends had spent the night before the ceremony drinking and talking, even gone to the armory, they fetched some wooden training swords and they went at each other. Varian had an early start on training and he'd always been good and now he was even better but so was Arthas. He'd been training rigorously and gave as good as he got. The alcohol that they consumed made him only slightly worse but the next day was all about formalities. Once the ceremony was over and Arthas was accepted in the light's grace, Varian tried to clap his friend on the shoulder only to have his hand sting when he struck the hard metal of the shoulder plates. Much laughter was added that but as most of you know by now, dark times were ahead of Arthas and the same can be said for Varian since amongst the court of Stormwinds a black dragon was plotted and scheming. On the orders of Deathwing, Onyxia disguised herself as Lady Katrana Prestor, and she convinced the nobles to not pay the Stonemasons Guild for their work. 
In this time, Varian was busy riding from one end of his kingdom to the other, protecting his people from raiding parties of orc stragglers and meeting with spies who were searching for the assassin Corona. And on top of all of that, he was directing the restoration of his kingdom. He was gone for months on end and had delegated the rebuilding of Stormwind Keep to the House of Nobles, but upon returning, he did his best to mediate the situation and he failed. For not getting paid, Van Cleef led his guild rioting through the streets as they escaped the city. The ride was dangerous and chaotic, and in the mass of confusion, Varian's wife Tiffin was killed. The death of his beloved sent the king into a deep depression, and Onyxia used her magic to feed on it, influence his mind, and rule from behind the curtains. Only Anduin was able to pierce the darkness, bring his father back to the light, and fight against her control. This meant that the Black Dragon had to come up with a new plan to regain control, and this time she decided to put the Defiance Brotherhood, those of the Stonemason's Guild had formed this organization, decided to put those guys to good use. Varian was convinced to join a conference at Fedamore to discuss a pact between the new Orcus leader named Fra and the people of Stormwind. Jaina Proudmoore did not have the history with the orcs as Varian had. Thrall had liberated his people from their internment camps and he had formed his new horde. Jaina and Thrall even stood side by side against the demonic forces of the Burning Legion during Warcraft 3 and Jaina was now doing her best to get some sort of peace between the orcs and the humans. As you might imagine, Varian was not too keen on sitting down with the people that have murdered his father and destroyed his kingdom, but his son convinced him to at least go and hear Thrall out. Now on his way to Fedamore, the king of Stormwind was attacked by the Defiers hidden amongst his crew and they brought him straight to the waiting claws of Onyxia. She used her magic to split Varian in two, one containing Varian's will which she planned on disposing and one Varian which she could easily manipulate and control. She might have gotten away with it too, was it not for the Naga attacking her just as she was about to strike. In the confusion that followed, the whale's variant was able to jump into the water, strike his head on something, lose his memory, but he did keep his life. The other variant was taken by the Naga, later on ransomed back to Stormwind to rule the kingdom and re-enter the dragon's web and be further ensorcelled. Which means that at this point, variant's story actually splits in two, since there are now two versions of him in the world. Let's begin with the Wild Varian. This one would wash up on the shores of Durotar. There, on the beach, the orcs were spotting a human waking up to the mouth of a hungry crocolisk. Bets were quickly placed on the outcome of the fight, but Rhaegar Urfjur's experienced eyes, they immediately could tell that this human was a very well-trained fighter. The Varian managed to put up a good fight, but it seems like the crocolisk was about to win. Rhaegar couldn't let his new prize be eaten, so a quick lightning bolt ended the life of the wild beast. But it wasn't required, since Varian, he had placed himself in such a way that the beast's own weight placed a stake through its heart. Rhaegar asks Varian who he was, and the human, to his shock and surprise, he doesn't remember anything. This made it all the easier for Rhaegar to capture Varian, despite the treaty between the Horde and the Alliance, and force him into his arena team, together with people like Valera Sanguinar and the druid Bror Bermantle. I will be your death! At first, these three unlikely allies, they were not really willing to work together. Varian didn't even want to fight. They considered giving him the taste of the whip for a bit, but Rhaegar was wise enough to know that if they placed his back against the wall, Varian would have to fight. His team is then pitched against another. Valera brashly enters the fight, and Bro and Varian, they have no choice but to go after her. Despite losing his memory, at his core, Varian still knows how to fight, and their group emerged victorious. For completing their gladiator training, Urfury allows them to choose a weapon from the Halls of Legends within Orgrimmar. These weapons, they will carry them into the arena at Dire Maul. Valera finds a set of orc daggers to her liking, Bro picks up a staff carved in the likeness of a stag, and Varian finds a belt. A belt that triggers his memory. A vision of Anduin Lothar towering over him with a stormy sea in the background. This is the moment where he and Lothar journey to Lordaeron. This belt belonged to the line of Azeroth and has found his way back to Varian. With the belt in his possession, he entered the Dire Maul Arena, where none could believe that Rhaegar's ragtag team of untried fighters could even make it through the first round. Despite their first expectations though, their arena team did great, overcame any challenge placed in front of them. Varian is able to put up such a good fight that he manages to win over the crowd's favor. They cheer his new nickname, Logush, meaning Ghost Wolf, a fitting name for the hero of Dire Maul. I am Varian, but I am also Logosh. Winning the fights had earned Rhaegar quite a bit of money, and he's ready to leave Dire Maul behind. But before he does, he decides that Valera, she doesn't make for the best team player, and he sells her to become a leader of her own team. Bro and Varian, they hate the idea of leaving Valera behind, but such is the life of a slave. They set out to Thunderbluff to meet up with Mega for Grim Totem and find a new recruit for their team amongst the Tauren. Now Varian, he's still trying to regain his memory, and although he receives his flashes from time to time, he still doesn't really know who he is or what he's supposed to do with himself. Brawl then recommends to visit the Pools of Vision for a 
cleansing ritual to see if they could find some answers and prevent Varian to be lost in his memories. Mega forewarns them that it would be unwise to go to the caves right now since an elemental has been let loose inside, but Varian and Bro, they're more than willing to take their chances. While meditating, both fighters receive their own visions and Varian finds out that he has a son, that there are people who need him so he can no longer stay with Rhaegar. After to take care of the elemental that they've been warned about, they're invited to join Rhaegar and Hamul Rune Totem for dinner, since Hamul, he expected that it was actually Megafa who had summoned the elemental in the first place, and now she had to pretend to be happy about it being destroyed. This made the old druid very happy, and as they sit down, he tells them the tale behind Varian's new nickname. Logash, also known as Goldrin, is a demigod who fought against the Legion, but he's been part of legends for millennia. Each culture has their own version, but one thing always stays the same. His ferocity and will was able to push himself through the boundaries of the afterlife to aid his people. Giving Varian this nickname was a compliment to his skills as a fighter, and as we would later find out, means so much more to Varian as a character. We'll get to that later on though. Now, with the tale done, Hamul gives Varian a feather as a thank you for destroying the elemental. Brawl immediately recognized the feather and the intention behind it, considering that he and Hamul are both druids. With the feather, he's able to summon the aid of a hippogriff, and on his back he and Varian escape their slave master. Rhaegar's guards, they quickly go after them, but Rhaegar himself isn't too worried about his top fighters making an escape. They've earned his investment in them a thousand times over at Dire Mall, and he always knew that this day was coming. The comics then dive a little bit deeper into Brawl's story arc, until he and Varian, they meet up with Tron the Whiskwind, who then tells them to go to the king's original destiny, to go back to Fathermore Isle. There, the human sorceress Jaina Proudmoore, she doesn't recognize Varian at face value, and she helps Varian with recovering more of his memory. They discover that he must be Varian Rin, the lost king of Stormwind. They'd given up hope on him, but despite not being able to uncover all his memories, Jaina has that he is the one and he must make his way back to Stormwind, but to do so carefully. They don't know the identity of his enemies and his son Enduin is still in the city, his life is still at risk. A ship carried the king, Bro, and even Valera, who by this time had escaped a new team, found a way back to them, all of them set sail across the sea. Their journey is not that easy though, once again the Naga are on the attack and these are the same Naga that also captured and ransomed the other Varian. In their struggle, the Naga Siren strikes at Varian with lightning, which is why he has the scar on his face. No one, not the Naga nor the Scourge, nor the fiery lords of the Burning Legion, will keep Varian away from his people. He might be king, but he's still every inch the champion gladiator as he slices the Naga Siren in two. Their journey to Stormwind would take them to Menefield Harbor and eventually even Idaforge. But first, let's talk about what happened with the other Varian, since, like I mentioned, this version was missing for a while, and in his absence, young Anduin Rin, he was crowned king, which is why, back in Classic, we had King Anduin in Stormwind. While truthfully, he was only a figurehead, and people like High Lord Bolfer Four Dragon and Lady Katrana Prestor, they were the real rulers in Varian's absence. Over a year ago, after leaving the city on his diplomatic mission, the people gathered to welcome the Lost King home, ransom back with the money earned from a special tax. Money once again taken from the people. They had paid a hefty price to see the king return, and worse yet, this Varian didn't at all seem concerned about the well-being of his citizens. He only had eyes for the beauty of Katrana, for balls and hunts. When Magni Bronsbridge showed up to ask for aid against the Dark Island Dwarfs, Varian, or I should say Katrana, they flat out refused the dwarf with the excuse that it was more a personal war considering that Magni's daughter Moira, she had left him, fallen in love and even got pregnant with the leader of the Dark Irons. Insult to the core, Magni was more than ready to leave the city and find out more about this real Varian he had been told about by Jaina. Anduin didn't understand what was going on. This was not the father that he had known, and he talked about his suspicions with Magni, and he also asked Bolvar to investigate. He even openly questioned his own father how it was that if he was taken by the Defias, how it was that the Naga were the ones who put him up for ransom. Varian simply laughed it off, yet from the shadows, Prester saw the threat of the child who could undo everything she'd worked so hard for to achieve. A threat that had to be taken care of, so as father and son were out for a ride, and Anduin tried to tell his father of Winter's fury as to what's been going on in Stormwind, Prester used their favorite weapon, a rock, to spook Anduin's horse. His father had to make a dive to save his beloved son, and as he holds his son's life in his hands, visions envelop him. Visions of the past, of the fires kidnapping him, of searing agony, of a naga attack, and of another cliff and almost near death. Prester's plans of getting rid of Anduin, they failed horribly, and Bolvar noticed how just the touch from Katrana that it befuddles the king almost as if he were bewitched. 
he now knows that Anduin is right. Something's going on here, and he's sure that Marshall Windsor's reports that will make for some interesting reading. The only problem was that Windsor, he was captured by the Dark Island Dwarfs, and he's being held within the Blackrock Depths. Now, in game, this was actually part of the Onyxia Attunement questline, in which adventurers they went in to save him and bring him back to Stormwind. In the comics, though, it's actually the Wild Variant and his party who get the honor to do so. By this time, they've made their way to Idle Forge, and of course, Magni is more than willing to believe that this is the real Varian, since this one has the strong will that he remembers and has no problem with helping the dwarves. A small party rides out the Blackrock Mountain, they save Windsor, and they escort him back to Stormwind. There, he reveals to all what exactly has been going on that the Black Dragon Onyxia, that she had tried to usurp Stormwind's throne, and naturally, Onyxia isn't quite happy. She throws away her disguise, and so do the guards, who are actually part of a Black Dragon brood, and a fierce battle takes place right there in the throne room. Where first, the two variants, they focus on each other, because they both believe the other to be a fraud, and Dwayne reminds them that there's a black dragon in there keep murdering all of their people. He was always a bright lad, so the two sides of Varian, they band together and they strike out at Onyxia, who realizes that her time in Stormwind is at an end. Before she goes though, she makes sure that Windsor doesn't survive that encounter, and she even kidnaps young Anduin back to her lair. For the moment, the two kings will hold on to their truce to save their son, and Windsor's investigation was thorough. He even discovered that Onyxia's lair that is near Fedamore, so the journey once again takes him to Jaina. She tells them that before they're going to confront the dragon, they must first know what she has done to them. Protective enchantments around the tower, it allows them to remember. Their physical connection, it enables them to fill in the gaps that they could not before, and now they remember everything. Everything. They understand that neither of them is a fake. They are two sides of a coin, more than brothers. They were divided, yet each of them had fought against the Black Dragon schemes on their own. One with sheer will, who became Lokash, champion gladiator, and one of them who was ransomed back and found his resolve to break free once again. For such formidable twins, Jaina has a twin gift. Two magical elven blades called Shalator and Elamain, also known as Shadowrender and Reaver. These blades were forged during the War of the Ancients. They were wielded by twin warriors, Vorillian and Lovellian. Between these two variants, they have twice the strength, twice the wisdom, twice the will to strike at Onyxia's dark hearts. And strike out they do. The might of their entire party is thrown at Onyxia. People are running over X, they are spawning more whelps into the battlefield, and the Black Dragon herself, she decides that it's time to end this once and for all. She uses her magic in an attempt to break the will of her puppet, a spell that sounds familiar to the variants, one that nearly destroyed them back on the island. The Ransom Varian jumps in front of his brother, the will of Stormwind's king, and he tells him to live on, slay this dragon, and save their son. For a long moment, there is a dead silence in the depths of the dragon's lair, until Varian Rin, one single being once again, rises up from the smoke. The twin blades given by Jaina, they've also merged into one, forming the legendary blade Shalamane, and its might, combined with all that Varian has to offer, is enough to slay the broodmother and save not only his son, but also their kingdom from her foul presence. Her head is then put on display for all of Stormwind to see, to honor the heroic deeds that were done on this day. This is where we'll end Varian's story for today, but his tale is far from over. There are negotiations to be had at Fedamore, and although Varian has been restored into one single being, he will need time to find his balance to deal with both his Logash side and his human prince side. That is for next time. For now though, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!